Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I am Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video provides a brief introduction to linear regression. Let's get started. Okay, we'll be taking a more in-depth look at linear regression later in the course, but for now, you should remember that the linear correlation coefficient r describes the strength of your correlation by quantifying how close all your data points collectively are to a line of best fit. This line is known by several names, but the one we need right now is the regression line. Linear regression is all about finding the mathematical equation that describes this line of best fit. Now, the general form of that equation is what you see here. y hat equals b0, or b0, plus b1 times x. In this equation, b0 is the y-intercept, b1 is the slope of the regression line. And yes, statistical software packages like StackCrunch can do the heavy lifting in calculating these values for you. Now, here's an example that we've seen previously. If we look over here at our scatter plot, we can see our line of best fit in red. StatCrunch can give us the equation of this line of best fit. You might remember seeing this result summary from a previous mini lecture. If not, that's okay. Just look at the top part of the summary. Here's the regression equation for that line of best fit. StatCrunch has computed it for you, so you can just take the values and run with them. B0, which is your y-intercept, is 122.17 and the slope of your line b1 also known as the coefficient for your x variable is 1.84 you can round these numbers off to however many decimal places your assignments ask two is pretty common if you're not asked for anything and again we'll go more in depth into linear regression in the future but what we've covered here is the essence of what you need to know for right now Let's review previous mini lectures by looking at an example problem and then we can examine some new features of the linear correlation coefficient that pertain to linear regression. Here we have the weights of seven car models and the reported highway fuel mileage. You can find the data in our StackCrunch group, but all you need to know for this problem is that we have a linear correlation coefficient of negative 0.987 and a p-value of zero. Now we're asked, what are the critical values of R and what can you conclude about a linear correlation? Remember, you typically find critical values of R from a table. Here's our critical R value table. So, what's our critical value of R? If you don't remember how to use the table, remember you first find your sample size. Okay, our problem statement says we have seven pairs of data. So our sample size is seven. We look in the table and find that value right here. Then we just look across the same row in the other column, and there's our critical R value, 0.754. But remember, we have two values for critical R value. So one is positive and one is negative. The table just lists the positive value. So don't forget the negative one. Now, that answers our first question. <clears throat> We're going to get the second question answered by comparing our critical R values with the R value we get from the data. So here's our number line with our critical R values. All we need to do now is add in the R value from the data set. What's that number? Well, here in the problem statement, we see the R value from our data is negative 0.987, which would place that about here on our number line. Now, what region are we in? Well, we're in the region of negative correlation, which is the region of acceptance on the negative side. Therefore, we can conclude there is sufficient evidence to support a claim of linear correlation between car weight and highway fuel consumption. Now, would we reach the same conclusion if we use the p-value instead of the critical r values? Well, we would. Our p-value is zero because zero is less than 5% or any other threshold we might use. We have a p-value that's considered low and in a region of acceptance. So we conclude, just as we did with the critical R values, that there is sufficient evidence to support a claim of linear correlation. Now, suppose that someone was transcribing the data from paper forms into the electronic database that houses our data file. And this person makes a mistake by entering 327.0 instead of 3270. 
what effect does this error have on the linear correlation coefficient? Well, here's a scatter plot of the data set without the transcription error. And now let's look at what happens with just one data point in error. Look at the wild swing that one erroneous data point made in your line of best fit. Why is that? Well, look at the data point that shifted position. Okay, you've got this point right here. It shifts all the way over here to the left. And so the effect on the line of best fit is that it gets pulled down by this erroneous data point that is now an outlier since it's far removed from the other data points. So the moral of the story is the linear correlation coefficient is very sensitive to outliers. That's a big reason why the first thing we do is make a scatter plot. We want to see if any outliers are in our data set. And if they are, we can investigate further to decide whether we should include them or exclude them from our analysis. In this case, a proper investigation would reveal the transcription error and make the correction to the data point. Now, let's suppose no error was made during transcription, but we decide later to add an additional data point for a Toyota Prius to our data set. Now, what change, if any, would this make? Well, let's look first at a scatter plot of our original data set. And here's what it looks like with the additional data point. You see it appearing up here as an outlier with the effect that it pulls our line of best fit up towards it. Now notice the R value from our data set has gone down because now with the outlier, the line doesn't, the line of best fit doesn't fit all the data points as well. Our critical R values change as well because they depend on sample size. And by adding another data point, we're going to compare R values and, uh, so we added a different data point and we changed the size of our sample. So now we have new critical R values. Now, before adding the data point, okay, we would compare R values and conclude that we have linear correlation. After adding the data point, we'd still conclude that, but notice how close we are to concluding the exact opposite. So again, we see the sensitivity, okay, in the linear correlation coefficient with respect to outliers and they need to make a scatter plot before doing anything else. In this case, a proper investigation would look at the data points and say, hey, this point is an outlier because coming from a hybrid car, it's different from the other data points that come from traditional engine cars. We then have a possible case for excluding that data point from our analysis. And that brings us to the end of this mini lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.